One, two, three. Well, that's, <laughs> that's on 6S power, so it's always a... There we go. What's going on, everyone? Steve here again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7. And here, what I'll be able to tell is my UDR upside down. Now, I've got several upgrade parts that I bought from my local hobby shop, Crazy Hobbies, and I've also got from Banggood. Now Banggood have started to sell several parts and I'm still waiting on some of those to come in. Now I've only got a few parts, I'm still waiting on a few more so when uh, you see this video I'll obviously have everything else and I'll put it all together in one video but I've only got, currently got hardened steel, well this is a thickened centre front drive shaft because a lot of people would know that uh, you would break this, I've already broken my one so that's awesome but I'll, I'll do a little a video putting all these together but while I was waiting for those parts I saw a really cool mod that you can do to the UDR now the UDR yes it's a solid rear axle it's exactly like a desert truck so it's got that driving characteristics a lot of people want but it also has a downfall if you're driving on tarmac which I guess you shouldn't really be driving this on it tends to roll over well pretty much all the time at low speed cornering now that's because of the solid rear axle it's straight both wheels are spinning at the same, uh, same time and when you're going to turn, the inside wheel it wants to fight with the outside wheel and vice versa and that causes issues. It's very similar to like how a go-kart works as well. But the thing about solid rear axle gives you awesome drifts, especially on dirt and on grass. It performs really well. But what I wanted to try to do, and I haven't seen any videos about it. I can't remember the guy's name, but he said there is an open diff mod you can do to this guy. So what I wanted to show you this before I get the other parts, because you actually need to use this current part that's on the UDR, kind of separate these two and it uh, works out. But you do need several other parts. Now, I went to Crazy Hobbies and I bought these. You need part 8577, and that's his whole gear set. 8581, which is the carrier, which is this right here, which is a plastic carrier. And that, once you take off this other section of this piece that you get on the UDR, this bolts onto it and it looks like any normal differential should. 8584 and that is a spider gear shaft set which is this, these right here. Now I haven't done this before, it's, uh, it'll be new to me as well but I thought you know what, I haven't seen any videos online about it and I thought let's try it out. And yeah I know a lot of people are going to say yeah but UDR it's supposed to be like that, it's scale driving, yeah I know but I wanted to give it a go and try it out anyway. How how bad could it possibly be? So if you haven't opened up a rear view or you doubt that is what it looks like. So it is cool. You need your planetary gear set there. I think it's for the I think it's to lower or speed up the ratio or the speed of of that uh, output drive there. I'm not exactly sure. Guys leave it in the uh, comment section down below. But this is all it is. So normal differential you can spin one way and the other, but once this guy's locked in there in this plastic housing, just like that, you spin this. And it only spins, well, both wheels spin. First things first, I'm going to dry fit this, um, take a lot of part to make sure it fits, but first thing we need to do is get rid of this part, and that's all it is. But I'm going to dry fit it, put it all together, see if it works, and then if it does, I'll show you how it all went together. Okay, so far, so good. Uh, I've put the blue gasket in, and then the silver washer, put the main gear in, and then you get the spider gears, the spider shafts, and the spider bushings like that and everything is in there as it should now there's no grease or anything in there at the moment and there we go so far everything is working so realistically these two are going to clamp together when I put the other gear on this side and it should be okay because this one will directly sit right in there like that and then we'll put the other thing on the other thing the other gear on <laughs> and then we'll obviously clamp it down to make sure there's no binding issues because I heard if you're using this particular part, if you're using the uh, aluminium part, I think there might be a slight issue with it binding. But uh, let's get everything in there and uh, we'll see if it uh, works. But so far, so good. So you notice on the original gear has this plastic insert in here. This you have to slide this out for this mod to work, just like that. And then you'll see you have two nice recessed edges in there. You get your seal, and here is your washer. It goes into the out of one and now get your gear slide it on in there and it should be quite a nice fit make sure everything's lined up push it in just like that and now we can make the two together you see on the plastic housing you've got to use that washer and it's just like any differential now you have to close it all up 
line everything up nice and slowly in the beginning. Don't want to pinch that uh, gasket, and that's it. Let me tighten all these up, and we'll see how if you have any binding issues. Okay, we have success after uh, checking the Googleplex. The two washers you only need on the plastic housing side, and that's just to help with wear the metal against the uh, metal against plastic, uh, the wear, the longevity. On the uh, metal side, the current gear side, you do not need it. So you just use a rubber rubber o-ring there, or, or uh, the seal. And on this side, you use the seal and the uh, metal washer or the spacer, which is this guy right there. That's all you need, because once it's all in there, it spins. Obviously, it's got some resistance in there, but it does spin. As you can see, it is all working. So that's awesome. So just, just to know, because I've, I've read on the forums, uh, Crazy Max, I believe, uh, originally posted this idea. So thank you very much, mate. Much appreciated. When you're rebuilding needs, you don't need these on either end. You just put it on the plastic housing end, this side here. You do not need it at all. Just use the rubber o-ring or seal, and that is it. So there it is. That, that's the mod. And basically, here is the original housing. This is where the straight uh, shaft would go right in there. And all you need to do is pop this plastic piece out, and you get your new open differential. You leave the current ball bearing in there, and you just slot it together, just like that. Awesome. So that's that's all it is. As you can see, everything fits in. And now if you get the other half and you want to close it back up, if I can find it. There it is. God, parts everywhere. Sorry. So if you get the other half and you use the current ball bearing, that's in there as well. And you can just close everything up. And uh, there we go. That's it. So as you go, there's it all spinning as a normal and your normal UDR. These will be locked and spinning at the same time. But uh, if you if you don't like the rollover, this might be uh, you know uh, an easy mod for you guys. Oh, it's uh, rollover central when you have when you don't have this or when you have a straight axle, solid rear axle. Um, but there you go. Yeah, so all you need to do is that. So what I'll do, I'll open this back up and I'm going to put some on me. I've got 125,000 weight uh, diff oil. You can go from anywhere from 100 to 500 depending on the level of of uh, how much you want it to bind, but uh, that's what I have on me at the moment. I'm going to put that on there, and uh, we'll get definitely see the difference later on. But uh, let's do that, and also got to put these other parts on as well. Sweet. All right, quickly for everyone playing along at home, I've just assembled it again, and all you need to do is push this gear out. There you go. All you need to do is install into the car one that comes with the car the blue O-ring, and you slide this piece in there, and that is that. Make sure I don't bind it up nicely, but that's it. Just spins in there. Put a bit of oil in there before you get that all together, just for a little bit of extra help. And here inside is inside the plastic housing. Here are your spider gears, and oh, it's easier to do this. I need to oil the whole thing out. And there you go. That's that mechanism. That's that system there. And can't forget the rubber washer, or oh, sorry, the O-ring. And there we go. That's the other side of that piece, as you can see. Now on this side, on that gear there, you can see it has a, a metal washer just underneath there, and then you, there is your O-ring. That seals it up, and that's it. So, I might just put a little bit of, uh, run some uh, defoil all on my hands and stuff on these parts, push it all in there, and then fill it up. And that is it. That's it, guys. So that's part done. I'll get all this put together, and uh, We'll see it all buttoned up. And there we have it. Really happy with that. It's in the stock housing, as you can see. All you need to do, like I mentioned before, take out that plastic piece that's in the current, um, where the wash, where the uh, ball bearing is, and that's it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grease the hair out of this with some nice marine grease to keep it all nice and lubed up, but also to keep out the dust, because in here, you do get a lot of dust. Well, not a lot, depends. But sometimes coming in from the ends. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grease the hair out of this, put everything back together, and that'll be, well, this particular mod for this car done. Next up, we've got to put the top wishbones on because we've got aluminium ones there. Put in this center drive shaft and also get rid of these plastic, plastic trailings arms. This is a second setup snap, so we'll put the uh, aluminium ones on there. But let's get all this buttoned up and uh, ready to go. Okay, now put everything back together. It is smooth and running as it should. There's only one drawback to this. You're not going to be able to use your disc brake calipers 
you know, they don't actually do anything, it's just for looks, because it's, uh, these shafts sit slightly further out than the original. The reason being is the original section the, where it's straight axle, it's hollow, as you can see. With an open diff, it can only go a certain distance inside, so it hits the inside of the diff housings, like the, the cups on either side, and it sticks out here further, I think about maybe 3 mil or so. So once you put everything on, you can see if I slide this disc unit on there, if I don't drop it, slide the disc unit on, which goes roughly just like that. And if I get this uh, brake disc, or I slide this on, that's as far as it can go. The brake disc, as you can see, these holes, they should, it should be able to go like that. So, you know, it sticks out that much further. You don't need it, it's just, I uh, just wanted to let you guys know, it's only about, you know, a couple mil, and that's all it is, so. That's where it normally sat. That's it. But that's it, just wanted to show you guys. Nothing to it, but it would, it would work normally. You just put everything back together, put the pin in, put the disc brake on, and then screw it down, and Bob's run cool. But that's it. Ready to pull back on the car. And, uh, yeah, nice. Spins freely. No binding at all. So I'm really happy about that. Alrighty, these parts finally came in. As you can see, these are the GPM Racing. Now, these guys are the, uh, actually the rear lower trading arms, and um, I have them in black. They are different colours. I think there's red, black, and silver as well. So Banggood has them all in now, I think. And at the time, they only had the black and red ones in, but I think they have the silver ones now. So we have those guys, and we also have, look at these cool things. Now, these are the upper suspension arms, or as they say, the front upper suspension arms set in silver as well. So they replace these guys here, which is a plastic set, obviously. And I don't normally, you know, I normally keep the wishbones and all that kind of stuff in aluminium, but I saw these guys, they look really cool. I don't think I'm going to change the lower ones, just the top ones, because when you change some of the aluminium, um, normally aluminium doesn't really bend and flex, it just kind of snaps and transfers the energy somewhere else, maybe where it's more expensive in the car uh, to fix later on. So that's why, generally, if you've got a good quality plastic, um, it bends and flexes nicely, there's no need to change the wishbones. So, uh, you know, we'll see how these goes. Um, so we'll get all this, all this stuff ready. The rear trading arms are super easy to, uh, you know, to change it. It just, there's a bolt here, just unscrew that from the, uh, through the axle here, and uh, that's it. But what I'll do, I'll get the camera back up on the mount there, and I'll show you how to, uh, how to do it. Now, like I mentioned, it's super easy. I've already done this previously because I changed the uh, differential here, but you've got, got one screw here, you undo that, and you've got one here on the body itself, and you undo that one as well. And you kind of have to just kind of push down this side of the body here to get access to it. And that's quite a long screw, but there's not much thread that bites into it because it's just in this part just here. So once that's undone, you can pretty much slide that out. Oh, there we go there. As you can see, it is free. And uh, these are the, probably the most parts that break on a UDR. I don't know why they've done that design. It's kind of hollow inside as well. I guess that's engineered to break on purpose, I see. And next up, two bolts here that attach the two suspension uh, units itself to the trailing arm. Need to undo those as well. And that's super easy. Nothing to it. I think this is probably the most popular mod, I reckon, for the UDR. It's fairly fairly cheap and it's super easy to do, do it really. And the uh, the replacement units do weigh a certain a lot heavier than these ones as well. And the the units themselves that you get, GPM normally make pretty good parts. I've had them on uh, the X Max, they're pretty good. They give you all the hardware that you need as well. So there's the uh, bag of hardware that we need. As you can see, here is our new GPM trailing arm. It's much thicker, much heavier, obviously, because it's made out of uh, aluminium. And one thing it's note is the plastic one only has two holes, which only gives you, well, one position to use, but the GPM arm gives you another position to use if you want to have a different suspension setting. Um, or I think it maybe can adjust the dampening or the height of the car, I'm not too sure, but at least it gives you that option. But it definitely is much thicker, as you can see. So, simple, simple to put on. Now to install it, you use the included stainless steel screw they get in the kit, line everything up, push it all in there, and... Uh, that's it, send it home. Nothing to it. That's pretty much it. And you also got to obviously install this one here, screw that one back up, and attach these two shocks wherever you want them. I'll just probably use them in the uh, similar 
uh, location to the stock setting and that's it so I'll do both sides and that's it and then we can start on to the uh, sweet aluminium upper A arms or exactly the upper suspension arms or same thing and one thing to note that the screws that you get are stainless steel like I mentioned but because it's going into uh, aluminium here you can, they give you nylon lock nuts to protrude through here because it's not going into plastic anymore so that's nice you don't need to worry about um, any Loctite there. Okay, awesome. Everything's installed nicely. Obviously we're missing <laughs> some of the uh, the guts in the middle here, but there we go. Nice, uh, nicely done. That does look so much better. It's so much beefier. The ones that you get, uh, yeah, prone to breaking. I've broken two sets already, but uh, luckily they were cheap enough from Crazy Hobbies now. They have a suspension arm set. It's a little bit tricky to get to, and that's just because of the nature of this car. I can hold this up here as you can see right here you can see that the one suspension or one shock the, un the unsprung shock and actual sway sway bar actuator right there goes through the shock sorry through the, the suspension arm so what you need to do you need to obviously disconnect it and uh, one side so you can just kind of pop it off now what I've done on the other one is I just unscrewed this one here and this one here and pushed the pin out um, just so you can slide up to the old mount just like that mount suspension arm <laughs> I'm lost for words I think I need a coffee and the ones the GPM arms here they are labeled really nicely um, done it's got a little uh, hard plastic what's that neurofine or not neurofine what's that uh, white plastic I'm not sure exactly what it's called but it's in there so it doesn't just go metal on metal and bind up so it's nice got this little ball there so uh, got some nice articulation or nice movement throughout the range of uh, suspension travel but they look really good and it's just a basic simple simple drop in and uh, install the old ones exactly the same as you can see good thing about plastic it does bend so that's what's good about uh, having plastic wishbones and upper and lower A arms, what you want to call them you know, I don't normally do this but I saw one uh, Banggood and I thought it would be a good opportunity for a video because I haven't really seen many people put them on but basically what you need to do is you need to get these two, so you've got your actuator here for your sway bar and you've got your shock and you just need to put it in just like that and that's it, then once that's on you can actually secure the bottom arm, which is this one, just here, as you can see, it's got everything still attached to it. Then you can secure these other two parts onto it, so it's all one piece now, and then you can attach it as per normal. But that's all it is. There's nothing much to it. It's a little bit hard to show on camera, but that's it. Nothing much to it at all. So the hardest part is you need to disconnect those two pieces, the uh, suspension and the actuator and for the sway arm, and that's it. It's too, it's simple. A couple bolts here and there, a couple screws, pull it out. And then we feed our new one in and she's as good as gold. So once that's on, I'll put this back on and we'll see how it looks. But uh, yeah, I like them already. I've seen these as well, the bottom arms, and they look mad when they're in all aluminium, but I don't think, I think that's a bit unnecessary. But uh, you never know, I could change my mind. And before I get you also get a new suspension pin, you also get the hardware that captures that pin so it doesn't slide out. Nice little... Uh, countersunk aluminium part and a stainless steel screw. Okay there it is, sorry it's a little bit tricky to do on camera, my hands would have been going all over the place but it does look really nice, the tricky part is feeding these two shocks, sorry not the one shock and the uh, sway arm here or the actuator in the top A arm and then trying to get everything in so it's a bit hard to do on camera. Use a stock screw that uh, attaches it to the C hub here or the hub carrier and that is it so I'll get the other side done and that is done and we can move on to the actual front drive shaft okay and when it's all together that's what it should look like sorry it's upside down but you know you get the drift now the next part which is the final modification is I think it's called the front drive shaft now on the kit and I think this is probably the second most you know common part that breaks this sits in the car just like that but upside down but this here is a center drive shaft, or it's a front drive shaft, sorry, and it's just plastic. It's a plastic 
telescopic drive shaft and I've broken this before and the thing just snapped. It's, uh, it's a lot of power going through that weak point. I guess it's manufactured to fail. That's where they get you to keep making parts. But uh, basically, that's a plastic one. Easier to, and it's a little bit hard to get to because it's just the nature of this car. Everything has to be done through the bottom here. So you do have to take a few parts out. I've taken some of the parts out. They don't really need to, but I want to just check it, grease it, and uh, you know, while I'm in there, have a look. But to get this center, the back end of this drive shaft off, there's a screw right inside there. You just have to undo that because don't be yanking on it, don't be pulling you know, aimlessly because it's right in the center there. And uh, all you need to do is undo that and pull it on out. And that's all there is to it. It's, um, it's fairly long, so just take your time and that's it and this this was a weak point of the car so this definitely will improve beefiness of this car i don't think i'll break well i will break something but uh yeah not this anytime soon because it's just it's really heavy too these gem gpm parts are super super heavy now you can just push fit uh press fit your bearing on there I have to give that a little bit of a love tap to get that bearing seated nicely it is a very very tight fit there but once that's on there we go simple as that and we're going to make sure that we put this small screw that attaches it all together now you could use loctite didn't have it in the oh it has it on the thread but i'll always put a little bit extra just for good measure that's all but udr is holding up pretty well considering i have gave it a pretty good beating since i've had it and you would have saw the initial video we went to the skate park a lot of flack on that video. Oh, it's not meant for that. I know it's not meant for that. I'm not stupid. It wasn't born yesterday. But, you know, I think it's... I mean, it's part of my job to show you guys how strong these cars can be. So there's the back half. And all of this goes in. It's just a nice key. I like that. And it just slides. I might give it a little bit of a grease. The kit does include another grub screw. Let's get that out of there. Stainless steel. And make sure we put a little bit of grub, <laughs> put a little bit of grub, put a little bit of Loctite on there as well. Now we can just put all this back into the car. One bearing at the front, one bearing at the back, and that's it. Now everything is good to go. These parts go on like that. It's as simple as that. So let me, I want to put the cover back on here. I want to grease this section up actually. And I want to put the cover back on and then we can put it all back together. And yes, so everything goes, and we'll give it a good test drive with this new differential. Now, I don't think you need to go to this extreme to pull this amount of parts to get to this. I just needed to check the front differential because I just wanted to make sure I had enough grease in there. But that's the grease I use. Good old marine grease, the dynamite marine grease. It's great. I've had no issues with it. Um, clings really well. Look at that. Yeah, nice stuff. Yeah, it's not the easiest car to work on if this happens to you. So basically, from from what I'm my recollection when I pulled it apart, in order to get to that front shaft, it's underneath this section here, which you definitely need to get access to, and that all slides together. We can just button it all up, grease it all up, and uh, take it for its first wrap with the new diff, and uh, see if that it actually does anything useful. There we go. That's kind of looking like it's supposed to. There we go. Sweet. Alrighty guys, now I have put it all together. Um, I left the bottom on here just in case uh, when I give it for a first test ride, there's nothing wrong. I can easily see what's going on, but and there we go. So, differential's in. As you can see, it's spinning as it should. The new trading arms, all nice. Uh, well, they're not CNC machine, but they are aluminium that's very nice and they're much heavier than the original I already have the uh, 46 kilo steering, steering server in here and I also got this other power HD I'll leave the link in the description if you want, want to know more about this this is a 21 kilo at uh, 4.8 volt or a 6, uh, a 6 volt 25 kilo servo so that's pretty sweet as well and also there we go the top arms are installed as well let's flip it around there we go there it looks pretty sweet with those arms uh, so far so good 
you know, not too complicated. It is much more complicated than a normal kind of car uh, changing out the diff or even the front shocks because everything it's, you kind of got to get everything, take some things off to get to the other, um, and that's especially with the hard and front drive shaft, which you can't really see in there, but it is in there, right in there. So it makes a little bit of pain pain in the backside, but you don't need to do it all the time. And if you upgrade to this hard and steel one, you won't be breaking that again. So that's awesome. So you might break something else, but that's it. So I think enough talking. I'll leave all the links in uh, those for those four products. I'll leave them in the description. Let's quickly power this guy on and take it out onto the front driveway on the tarmac to see if it uh, does make a difference. All right, here I'm at the front of my house. Sorry if it's a bit noisy with the cars going past, but we'll just give it a bit of a go. This really grippy concrete. And... So it still definitely wants to roll. If you get it enough, you can see it, uh, it still wants to get the tail out, but it's definitely not as uh, not as hippy. Um, it's definitely still does hammer. You can see that still, uh, but nowhere near. Yeah, nowhere near as much as tipping over. Definitely still boogies though, and that's on success. Still very fun to drive, that's for sure. Now let's try this. One, two, three. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's on 6S power, so it's always a... There we go. Yeah, no, no nowhere near as tippy. It's still just as much fun, still gets the back end out. And this is only a small driveway where I can uh, press this out on, but definitely really cool. I think some people are scared that it might take away the characteristic of driving this thing, but uh, from this little quick blast, it still hammers out, still gets that uh, tail happy. And it's also, I think, depends on how thick you make that uh, diff differential oil. <laughs> it's interesting to see how long these are. Uh, the, well, the front plastic diff housing, so I don't see no difference to the back, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. Um, yeah, well, it's exactly like the front one, just in the back as well, so... So far, I think if I had my solid rear axle, I would have definitely flipped it by now, even doing these slow kind of uh, manoeuvres, like that. Definitely, uh... If you still Steve still wants to go on two wheels every now and then like that. But uh, so far, <laughs> love this thing. Okay, get that. All right, guys. Let me know what you think of this uh, quick mod. I'd like to give uh, props to the guy who actually thought of this idea. I think it was Crazy Max on the um, Traxxas forum. So thanks, guys. Appreciate that, mate. And uh, yeah, seems to work so far. Obviously, it's just a quick blood up and down my driveway. It's no biggie, but uh, certainly, I definitely, oh, I, need that, <laughs> I need that battery. Um, certainly, it didn't roll as much um, as it did with a uh, solder rear axle, and that's, that's obviously uh, what you'd expect. But uh, yeah, the trailing arms are awesome. See how long they hold up. Uh, the center, or the front drive shaft, definitely will make a difference. I think these, uh, the front A arms are just gonna be pretty much for cosmetic, but they do look cool as shit though. But um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'll leave the description, uh, the link in the description for all these parts. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Look forward to the next video. Hopefully I'll get this out and longevity of that differential. And uh, there's other parts. We'll, yeah, see if it works out. But thank, thanks, guys. Steve here again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.